So the CS is now following a change in recommendations at the level of uh, the entire province uh, regarding uh, the need for precaution for healthcare workers. Um, we used to recommend the, the, the use of the N95 mask or the use of airborne precaution. Uh, these recommendations were made initially uh, because uh, we didn't know about this new virus very much at the time. So we played it very safe by putting all the measures we could to, to protect the healthcare workers. However, three months into the new outbreak, a lot of research has come out now. And what we are discovering is that this virus is not transmitted through the airborne route. It is transmitted through droplets or contact, touching surfaces that are contaminated. So this is why we are now reviewing our recommendations that are safe for healthcare workers, but that do not require airborne precautions, simply because this virus is not transmitted through the airborne route. So airborne and droplet transmissions are, 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 are vectors through which the a virus can be transmitted in theory uh, from one person to the other. Airborne transmission refers to the capacity of a virus to be transmitted through very, very small droplets or very small particles that can travel on air currents. They can remain suspended in the air for extended periods of time and they travel through air currents. So if a virus is transmissible through the airborne uh, route, airborne transmission, it could, for example, infect someone who's many, many meters away from, from the infected person. This is airborne transmission. Droplet transmission is a, is a form of transmission where um, a virus can be transmitted from one person to another through bigger particles. So when someone coughs, for example, the particles that will be emitted are bigger and because of gravity they will tend to fall. So they, they cannot remain suspended in the air. Usually droplet precaution applies when you're within two meters of the person because this is how far when someone coughs, this is how far the particles can travel. So right now, the evidence shows that uh, the coronavirus, COVID, can be transmitted through, droplet, through droplets, so short distances, but not through the airborne route, long distance through, through particles that remain suspended in the air. So this change is being made based on the new evidence. The evidence now is that this microbe is not transmitted through the airborne route. It's transmitted through droplets or contact. So, uh, and this recommendation is based on the new evidence and this is what societies are doing all around the world. Uh, the United States are, are updating their recommendations now. The World Health Organization is also updating their recommendations. Public Health Agency of Canada. So everyone now is, is making the most of the new evidence to adapt their recommendations. For healthcare workers caring for patients with confirmed coronavirus or, or suspected cases, most of the equipment they'll need to use will remain the same. They'll still use the face shield, the gown, the gloves, uh, as usual. What will change is the type of mask they, they need to use. Uh, they used to be uh, wearing the N95 mask, which is a very tight-fitting mask uh, that healthcare workers wear. But now they'll be able to use instead the surgical mask or the procedure mask, which is the mask that loops around the ears and that is more loose fitting. It's also more comfortable to wear. So this is the big change. It's also that because we don't need airborne precaution anymore, we will not need to place the patient in a negative pressure room. So we will be able to place them only in, in normal, regular uh, rooms. Even though in the vast majority of circumstances now, only droplet and contact precaution will be required to treat a patient with COVID, there will be specific situations, very specific ones, uh, which are the ones we call aerosol generating procedures. For example, when, we, when a healthcare worker intubates a patient or when there's a bronchoscopy, these kinds of procedures can generate aerosols that can travel long distances. So in these very specific situations, we will still recommend the use of an N95 mask. But for the vast majority of, of healthcare workers now, this will not be required.